I'm David Jago, I work for Mintel. We're a UK-based research company looking at consumers, markets and innovation in the world of food and drink. The protein trend is a really interesting one and one that we've been asked about a lot by our clients over the last two to three years in particular. Um, really something we saw growing out of the US market and developing really strongly into Northern Europe. Um, I guess really over the last couple of years it started to go mainstream and we've done a lot of consumer research around the area and to, to understand what the motivation is and I think the really promising point about protein is that there are multiple reasons for consumers to buy into high protein products which really suggests to us longevity in the market. Protein is well recognised by the majority of consumers in all European markets as a good source of um, healthy lifestyle food if you like, as a sort of generic healthy lifestyle factor there. But then below that, you start to see consumers really getting to understand the properties of protein around muscle building, around weight management, around satiety. Even though those claims may not be regulated, um, consumers adopt protein products for various different reasons and in multiple categories. So where once consumers would have looked for quite obvious products, you know, meat, and fish and nuts and, and dairy proteins, they're now much more willing to explore areas around plant protein in particular. It's certainly not a gimmick, it's certainly not a fad. We see it as very much a long-term trend. Um, I think an interesting way to think about it is that if you look at the nutritional panel on a food product, you can almost trace the timeline of consumer interest around certain areas. So back in the 70s, it was around calories, and then consumers started to think more about fats, and then they started to think about carbohydrates and sugars in the 1990s. And it's taken a long time for the average European consumer to get to protein on the nutritional statement. But they, they found it now and they're starting to explore it and starting to really understand it. And that's good for the long term future. So as well as growing consumer interest in protein, the, in, the industry has been very good to respond. And we've seen high protein claims appearing front of pack on products far more than ever before. In total terms, it still might only be a couple of percent of all products new to market across Europe but it's now in practically every category and we're seeing that high protein statement used front of pack almost as a, as a destination, something that consumers actively go looking for because they see those multiple benefits, they see high protein, they think I'm going to try that, if I like it I'll keep buying it. So right now the dairy category of course is very strong in protein, but actually some of the fastest growth we've seen has been in the snacks category. Um, a lot of it's around snack bars, as you might expect, because we've seen sports nutrition moving further and further mainstream. So sports-related bars with high-protein claims are now in supermarkets everywhere. Um, but we've also seen bagged snacks, particularly plant-based bagged snacks, flagging up the high-protein content of the product. Um, every other category you can think of, drinks of all kinds, not just sports drinks, um, even ready to drink coffees, uh, communicating high-protein claims, even waters in some markets.